before we get into this review, let me just start off by saying I absolutely love this show to death. Uh, I got into it around season five, and since then, I have not been able to take my eyes off this show. I love The Office. It is just one of the greatest shows ever right now. Hey, everybody. So let's talk about The Office Season 8 premiere. It came on at 9 on Thursday, and we got to find out a whole bunch of new stuff that should be coming up in this uh, upcoming season. Like, for one... Pam is pregnant. Again. With a boy this time, though. Uh, what else? Angela's pregnant. With a gay senator baby. Okay. And... Andy is the boss of the sh of, of, of Dunder Mifflin now. Oh, where do I start on what I thought about this episode? This episode sucked. It just... It just sucked. I mean... <laughs> they, it just sucked. It really did. What the hell? A list? That's the best they could think of. Like, we have a season premiere. Oh, by the way, yeah, Spader's not the boss. Because Spader's character decided to talk to... Um... What's her face is like character Joe, and he actually talked her out of being CEO so he can be CEO. So he took over um, Kathy Bates's job, and I'm just like, okay, that's that's that was kind of funny, I guess. Um, I don't know what else to say about it really. Just this show. Oh man, it just wasn't good. It wasn't a good episode, but I hope this next, this season's not going to suck as much. Ah, so un unenthusiastic about this. I, I'm so sorry, but it's like, honestly, I got nothing good to say about this. It was such a boring episode. What, what is it like? Spader left the book open and there was a list of names and specific names were on one side and the names were on another side and... Eh. <laughs> like it, it just it was like such a filler episode. Here's the sadder thing. You know your episode was bad when nepotism becomes a better episode than the premiere episode. I mean, see, you you could rag on people you could people could talk shit about you know season 7 all they want. Like, oh, nepotism that was a bad season premiere episode. You know what? Let's compare it to this one. A fucking list that nobody knows what it's about till, what, like, towards the middle of the end of the episode? Or Michael <laughs> spanking his nephew. You know, give me this Michael spanking his nephew episode over what the hell I just saw ten minutes ago. Honestly, like, that was just, oh, such a awful episode to start off on. Seriously, though. And, like I said, the, there was some funny moments, so, but it, it wasn't even enough to make it like, yes, this was such a good episode. No, it was an ass of an episode. The only two funny things that I thought were funny was, was Kevin going, warning, 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 and, and what was it, Stanley, like, uh, shove it up your butt? <laughs> Like, that's my new thing now. That's what I'm going to say. Like, I say a line and I say, shove it up your butt. <laughs> That was it. Like, me finding out Pam having another kid, I'm just like, good fucking God. They're doing this fucking stupid ass arc again? What the fuck? You are not Marvel... You are not the DC Universe to rehash this shit. You know? Like, what are they at? DC writers over there now? What do we get? We get, like, 52 office or something? They're rehashing shit now. Like, really? They say that, like, this show jumped the shark when... They had a baby? Nuh-uh. They jumped the shark when they had another fucking baby. Oh, oh, they jumped the shark again when they gave another character having a baby with another character having a baby. What the fuck? Like, and I don't, and I, look, I curse. I curse, like, just about every review, I, almost every review I've made. But damn, like, this is me just being upset at 
Because I love this show. So forgive me for sounding like, like a ranter or a troll right now. But... It's not funny. Like, that's... It's not even an interesting concept. They're having kids? Like... If anything, I think it's pretty cruel. I mean, that guy's, like, a fruit or whatever. And, you know, he had a kid with her? I mean, I don't, I, I don't even see how that's possible, but... That's funny somehow. <laughs> like, it is, if it wasn't The Office. But The Office has built this, like, realm around itself where it's like you, you, like, you make jokes like that and they're just like, ah, oh, that's not really that funny. <laughs> like, not here at least. You know, like, it's just weird. It's not like, I mean, it is funny, though. You know, gay, a potentially gay dude banging some, like, uptight <laughs> religious chick and, you know, giving him a kid. That is classic. But in this case, it's just like... I don't know, that's kind of cruel, don't you think? Because, I mean, I know Angela's a bitch, but damn, like... I'm gonna see how this is... I mean, because we're gonna have to find out that this dude's gay eventually now. Because if they're gonna pull some shit that he's not gay after all, what the fuck was that whole build-up then in season fucking seven? Like, oh yeah, he's gay. He's totally gay. And then you're gonna pull, turn around and go, yeah, he's not gay after all. No. If they do that shit, good, no. Oh, man, I... I can't be the only one that's going to call bullshit on that. I can't be. You just can't just, like, accept that and go, Whoa, it is it is the office. No, fuck you. It's not. You can't do that. I'm sorry. You just can't. I know. Sounded like a troll, but... I don't, I don't know what... I mean, tell me how that's just... I mean, tell, tell me... I mean, justify it for me, then. Just, you know, just defend what I just saw as good. Because it wasn't good at all. It was lame. It wasn't even bad. It was lame. Bad, like, is bad, but this is just lame, and that's worse than bad in my perspective. You know. Oh god, this this episode is bad, and sp I like that. Like, I love that. I love that they're just like last minute, like, eh, Spader's not the boss anymore. Really, like, we want Andy as the boss, and that makes sense, I guess, because you know Andy is a screw up. Like, the be like the the most the the best screw up in there is Andy. Like, I know people think that Dwight's the screw-up, but Dwight's too serious about the job that when he screws up, it's it's borderline like Coen Brothers dark. Like, when he shot that gun, you know, because of the holster or whatever, or <laughs> was it like a banana or something? Like, I don't even remember, but when he shot that gun, I was like, this is funny, but now they're, they're hitting some, like, fucked up, borderline cynical territory of, like, this is our form of humor now. Injuring others. Which, yeah, they've done that before, but it's like, what the hell, Jim was bleeding in one episode because of Dwight? And I'm just like, no. <laughs> what the hell? Who, who's, who's writing the script for this? Quentin Tarantino? Like, <laughs> like, let me do a Jim face on that one. Because I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? But yeah, Andy as the boss. Am I surprised? A little bit, but not really. Because like I said, he's a screw-up, so he does fit Michael's shoes pretty well. But what you gotta realize, though, is that Michael, was, though Michael was a screw-up, when it came to, to paper and Dunder Mifflin, he actually did have it together. Which, you know, made it a little bit hypocritical, because it's like, how does it like you can manage a business somehow, but when it comes to, you know, just you being you, you're like a total tard. <laughs> you know, my apologies for using that word, but it's just like, you know, I, I, I don't get it, but it, it was funny, though, for that, and you didn't quite, you know, I didn't get it, maybe I, I didn't need to get it, because it was funny, but now with Andy, though, I mean, Andy's a terrible salesman, he's barely made any sales, you know, if any, because it goes back and forth where he's made one, and he hasn't made one, or something like that, and then he, like, I like when, when Michael gives him those, like, special accounts, he's like, I lost three of them already, and it's like, you want that guy to be the boss. Huh. Because, I mean, we saw Jim as the boss already, and that wasn't that funny. That was more frustrating to watch than funny. Dwight as the boss, we saw that already, and though that had potential, I love that they were just writing dark shit for Dwight to do. Like, yes, he's gonna kill somebody eventually. No, and it's like, yes, and you know I would have wanted to see the as boss instead of Andy? Toby. Because maybe it's just me being cynical and me being biased to Toby because he is my favorite character on that show. But 
Toby as the boss would be funny on so many levels. Toby, <laughs> be it that Toby's part of HR, he has, like, no people skills whatsoever. Like, that guy couldn't solve... That guy couldn't. That guy couldn't resolve like a conflict between two mentally challenged people in an argument. He just like it's Toby for you though. Like he's such a he's such a softy. Like, like that's what ma- would make it funny. Like you know, there's a problem in the office and Toby is in the middle. He's like, well, you guys are gonna have to just figure this out. Like and and you know, demo like someone's gonna push that guy around. He's like, you know what, Toby? This is why nobody asks you. <laughs> And that's just the way I see it. Like, that's that's funny to me. Like, whenever Michael gave Toby shit, that's, like, the funniest fucking thing to see. Like, Michael, did you call me? Yeah, I want to hit you in the face with a hammer. <laughs> oh, my God. See, that's funny. And I could see that for half a... For, like... I could see that for a good three seasons straight. Like, poor Toby just, like, getting fucked over for everything. It's like, damn it, Toby, you forgot to sign the fucking paychecks or something. And then Toby's like, well, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> That's funny! And I'm not a writer! Well, not a good one at least, but... You, like, I could write you an Office episode, you know? Like, Toby's the best! Like, he would have been the best candidate to be the boss. Like, <laughs> just thinking about all this shit Toby could get into. I mean, we saw Creed as the boss classic but that would have not lasted that long Let, let's face it i mean uh, next to toby it's toby for me then creed then then kevin then stanley then um then dwight uh, and then meredith those are like my favorite characters i borderline could care less for anybody else that i didn't add in there phyllis uh, i'll add phyllis on there but yeah everyone else is just like a meh, character gabe uh, Kelly, Brian, Jim and Pam, you know, oh, no, I like Daryl too, so I'll put Daryl in that, I like category, and everyone else can, like, I don't give a shit, but, um, Daryl would have been a good candidate too, but really, Andy though, I just don't see that, it's not that funny, and he wasn't really that funny in this episode, like, he was, I get that, like, I saw those Michael moments he was trying to do, but they don't work, because Andy's, like, such an, like, Oh, I went to Cornell, and that's funny, but, like, not as a boss, though. It's like, I'm gonna buy a margarita pizza. And they're like, what's that? That's, you know, it, it's mozzarella. It's a dollop of mozzarella on top of pizza sauce. That sounds like regular pizza, or whatever the fuck they're talking about. And then, like, what was it, the follow-up joke to that? Like, oh, most of you classic pizza fans are gonna enjoy this. So, basically, he got a regular cheese pizza. Not really that funny. You, you see it? Like, Michael would have done something far fucking more outlandish and it would have been more hilarious. Like, Toby, resolving a situation like that, like, well, you know, I'm I'm doing the best I can. And that's where people get mad at fucking Toby because it's like Toby's such a pushover. They're like, you know what, Toby, you're not doing the best you can. And then yell at him or something and that'd be fucking hilarious. Because, <laughs> I mean, they, but that's me, though. That's me. That, that... That's me on what I would do on that show. Bring it back. But, um, yeah, first episode is off to a bad start. Bad, 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 bad start. I, this is, I didn't watch all of season seven. I, I watched me up to the, the, the Toby and Michael talk. Like, when they're sitting down, they have to hash out the six hours of, 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 like, HR time or whatever the fuck. Um, yeah, I, I, after that, I was like, you know what? I'll wait till this shit comes out on DVD. Guess what? This, this episode alone already motivated me to do that. Not gonna watch it from here on out. I, I don't care. I don't care if I miss something. Whatever. I, it'll come out on DVD. I'll just watch it then. I'll get to enjoy it. Just, you know, zipping through it. But, yeah, this was just not a good episode, folks. It just was not... Die Hard, I mean, I can't, I, and I've defended this show up until season seven, you know, I can't defend it right now because based on one episode alone, it sucked, and I'm just gonna leave it at that, I'm gonna let other people enjoy it, criticize it, whatever, I'll wait till it comes out on DVD and then I'll give my own, opi- I'll follow up on opi- opinion when that comes out. Um, yeah, this wasn't that good though, and, like, let's, let's look at it this way, this show, granted, people complain that, oh, 
you know, they, they got serious after a while and they stopped being funny. Well, to be fair, characters grow. Characters grow and characters do develop. I mean, and and you might say, well, why are you complaining that ha- them having another kid is bad? Because they did it fucking once. They did this story once. What is the purpose to do a story like this again when that character, for example, Cece, is barely fucking seen? You know what that's hinting at is that, like, hey, baby ratings, sort of good, a majority of the time, really kills a fucking show. Like, a lot of fucking shows. Full House, for a fucking example. I mean, off the top of my head, think of any fucking show that had a baby in it. Where did it go after that? Chances are, to the fucking gutter. To the fucking gutter, because no one gives a fuck about people having a baby on a show. No, people can barely fucking stand it when people get together on fucking shows. Because, oh, it destroys things. It makes the show not so funny now because there's conflict and there's romance and people don't want that shit, apparently. I go by what people tell me. I go by what people have been telling me from day fucking one. I'm going by what people have been putting on message boards, what people have been putting... Troll, uh, what people have been trolling on so much about. They hate when Jim and Pam got together. I could care fucking less. That, to me, is character development. That's fine with me. Them having a baby, that's fine with me. Them having another one, though... What the fuck? Stop it. Stop having kids. It's not cool anymore. You did it once. We get it. You guys have sex. We could clearly fucking imagine that with with you guys be, being together already. And then to have Angela have a baby too. Who the hell initiated that? I want to know who initiated that being funny. Like, that was going to be a cool arc. Yeah, Angela has a baby along with Pam. What? No. That's not funny. That that's 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 just regular people stuff. You telling me like Angela found out like you know what would have been funnier if Angela still is oblivious to this dude being a fruit. That would be funny. Keep that going. And then, you know, have her fall back into Dwight's fucking bullshit punch hole card thing. You know, because they did this last time too with season fucking six. Um or, yeah, it was season six, I believe, where it was, what was it that, like, Dwight was doing this whole thing against Jim, and he had Ryan involved, and they never followed up on it. Like, nothing. It follows up to nothing. Kelly's fucking thing followed up to nothing. She she goes to the fucking, what, print all colors program, and she comes back, and it's like, that was cool for, like, two episodes, and we dropped that, too. They do this all the fucking time. And they did this, too, when, when Dwight... I don't know, or bought the fucking building? God. And they don't bring... Watch. Five bucks, they don't even bring that up anymore in this season. That, like, oh yeah, Dwight owns the building. We forgot about that. Let's bring that up for one episode. Chances are they won't even bring it up for one episode. They'll forget about it. They do this, like... Ugh. Since season five, they've been doing shit. No, since... No, since season six. Since the beginning of season six, like, shit just... They've just done shit like this. Um, but yeah, I, I, I feel like I, I've let everything out of The Office. I think, like, if you, if you want to know what my favorite seasons were, one through, one through five are, are my favorite. Six, I, I still respect six, and I, I, I hold a minimal amount of respect for seven. It wasn't that bad. Like, people are like, oh, seven was terrible. It was, it was, that's not The Office anymore. It still is The Office, but, you know... Not really that much anymore, because you do have Michael potentially, you know, leaving, but it, it's it's still there. Like, I, the elements are still there. There's some funny episodes in there, but this one, though, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I don't expect anything good anymore out of this show. But, hope you know what? I want to be proven wrong, because I, I want to still like this show. Uh, on a serious note, like, I, I, I love being proven wrong on on negative assumptions on stuff that I've seen. Because, like I said, I, I don't want to hate things. I want to enjoy things. You know, as a critic, I mean, speaking on my own behalf, as a critic, I want to enjoy what I watch and what I see. If it sucks, and yeah, I gotta let you guys know that it sucks. And it sucks for me to, to, have, to watch a sucky thing, because, I mean, why would you want to watch something terrible? You get what I'm saying? Like, so hopefully these upcoming episodes, they, they'll they'll be better. I mean, I'm going to see what other people review, you know, I'm not going to do a review every episode, but I'll see, I'll just, I'll check every now and then 
what word of mouth is, like, you know, what, what, what regular fans are saying online, what regular fans are saying by word of mouth. I'll go by that. I mean, I'll just go by that in the sense that I, I'll just listen to that. That doesn't affect my opinion in any way. You could tell me something's terrible and I'll watch it and then I'll make my opinion. So, when season 8 hits DVD, um, I'll check it out. I'll toss in my two cents. Season 7, if you want my opinion on it, um, wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, but you can, you can officially st start seeing a lack of development for the show because look at season 8 and look what that gave us right now for our first episode. Okay, so... I'm sorry, but the the last few episodes in season seven, some are hit and miss. More miss than hit. So, have fun watching the rest of the season, you guys, because uh, I am... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to petition now to get Outsourced to come back on the air, because I, I don't... I think that show's really been... I think that show's officially canceled now, because I haven't seen it come back <laughs> since, like, what, fifth or sixth episode that they've made. Yeah, bring back Outsource. That was actually a good show. And, um... And, yeah. <laughs> so, that, that's it for me. PopCultureGeek.com Warning! Warning! Warning!